Hi, welcome back. Welcome to Writing with Dev, lesson number 23. And this is uh, number three in our 10 top 10s about writing. So today's top 10 is da -da -da, top 10 writing myths. Let's rock and roll. All right, let's start with number 10 writing myth is that you need motivation. You don't need motivation. You don't need motivation. You just need to sit down and work. Motivation follows action. You, you start to work and then you feel like working. And to be honest, sometimes you start writing and you're still not motivated. Motivation will only come when you start. You have to fake it till you make it. Simple, small. Make a small action, like open the notebook, open the document, write one word, write one sentence. You'll find actually all of that effort that it takes to start is kind of 90% of the effort for the project. Motivation follows action. Repeat after me, have it tattooed on the inside of your eyelids. Number nine, writing myth. Number nine is that you need feedback. You don't need feedback. You do not need feedback. You know what you want? You want someone to say, you're awesome, you're amazing. So just say to yourself, just say, you are brilliant, this is awesome, just keep going. You don't need feedback. You need to become the person who gives yourself feedback. So yeah, if you need feedback, if you go, oh, I just need to show this to someone, so, because I just need their feedback. Is it that you want them to tell you what to write in your piece? Like, isn't that a job for you? Or alternatively, if you just want them to tell you that you're brilliant, just, Tell it to yourself. If you live for people's encouragement, you will die by their criticism. You have to give yourself feedback if that's what you need. But you know what your feedback is? Just keep going, you're brilliant. Just keep going. Number eight. Writing myth number eight. Write with an audience in mind. No, you're the audience. The audience doesn't know what they want. They've got no idea do you want they want gangnam style crocs 50 shades of gray the audience didn't know that they wanted that the audience is an idiot you are your own audience write the thing that you want to read make the screenplay you wish that you could watch the podcast you wish you could listen to this idea that you write towards an audience really warps your own instinct and it has you playing to the crowd they don't know. They are idiots. Repeat after me. The audience are idiots. Just write what you want to listen to. I'll tell you a story. So I've got a mate. She was doing a master's. And, you know, at this faculty or in this institution, all the people who were doing master's would kind of meet up every three months and they would present. But before you did it, you sat down with your supervisors the week before and you told them what you were going to do in this presentation. So this friend of mine... We'll call her Can Do Karen, because that's actually her name, Can Do Karen. She and her supervisor couldn't kind of hook up together to have a chat about what she was going to present. So she just rolled up and presented what she presented. And it was the most stunning piece of performance and education and information and entertainment. And everyone loved it. And both her supervisors said, because she was in two faculties, had you shown us that last week and told us what you were going to do, we would have told you not to do it. So do not write for an audience, write for yourself because the audience only knows what they've already seen. What you need to do is become a self-sourcing pudding. You need to become self-reliant and become your own creator of taste and instinct and look actually I shouldn't say creator you are already the creator you are there you've got it that is why you're writing you just need to hone and strengthen that voice that instinct and that taste because you've got it already if you're asking other people for feedback or if you're asking them to be your audience you you just never get anything done of any value because you'll just be replicating stuff that's been done in the past and 
giving people what, what they've already had. And what we need from you is you, your taste and your instinct and your talent. Become a self-sourcing pudding. Just be, go, go back to yourself for all of that stuff that you have been for a long time looking to others for. Number seven, writing myth. That you need to be a great writer or a great speller or to read a lot of books in order to write. That's just rubbish. I'm dyslexic. Growing up, people would say, well, you're never going to be a writer because you can't spell. To which I'd respond, but I don't want to be a speller. I want to, I want to be a writer. And they'd say, well, you're never going to be a, a writer because you don't read enough. It's like, again, don't want to be a reader. I want to be a writer. All that stuff about you need to know grammar and you need to be a great speller in order to be a writer, get something published, consider yourself a writer, become a professional writer, is just rubbish. There are gazillions of people out there who are brilliant spellers and brilliant um, grammarians. There are professional editors. There are a whole host of people who have the skills to be able to create clean copy, but they don't have the imagination. They don't have the ideas. They don't have the tenacity to be able to create something from the ground up. If you want to be a writer, you've got to write a lot. And you don't have to read books. It's such, that is such a kind of a, a kind of a classist, old-fashioned idea that in order to be a writer or a great writer or anything in that wheelhouse, that you need to read a lot of books. It's like, hell, books are not the only way that we can transport or evolve ideas, information, education. In order to be a writer, you need to write a lot and you need to think a lot and you need to put yourself out of your comfort zones. Go into different situations, um, watch or listen or read stuff that you wouldn't normally. Have conversations with people that you wouldn't generally and question yourself about your ideas deeply. Great readers, I know heaps of people who just like read eight books a week and they just throw them over their shoulder. They can't write. I actually think that reading a lot can often pe put people off, pull people off track with their motivation and their instinct. I know that at the start I said that you don't need motivation to write, but I mean motivation to think about writing. I think that often people just procrastinate read and they read so much that they just get so down about their own ideas because they're comparing their ideas with these beautiful, finished, copy-edited books that just kind of flow because they have been massaged and they have been polished. So I'm not saying don't read. Read if you want, but it's not the key to being a good writer. If you want to be a writer and you want to be a good writer, keep thinking, keep writing, put yourself out of your comfort zone. Ah, writing myth number six. That writing is fun. Writing's not fun. Who told you writing was fun? Do you know who told you that writing was fun? People who don't write for a living. Look, writing can be fun. It's true. Sometimes you're in the swing of it and it's really enjoyable. You can't expect it to be fun. It's not sitting under a weeping willow with a moleskin notebook on a milk crate wearing a pair of vegan skin shoes. That's not what writing is. Writing is more like digging ditches. Writers are tradies. We just we just get up, we got out, we get our big M, we get our packet of fags, we get our pie, we get in our ute, and we just turn up. That's what we do, we just turn up. We turn up with the tools, and sometimes we have a good day, and sometimes we have a bad day, but if we keep chip, 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 chipping away, it all happens bit by bit. It's not fun. If you feel like you are pulling your legs through your body and out your mouth and running a marathon like that, you're writing. That's great. And again, yes, yeah, sometimes it is fun, but you just have to lower your expectations. It's that under promise, over deliver situation. And anyone who tells you that writing is fun or writing is always fun or that writing should be fun, why are you pushing it? Writing should be fun. They've actually never finished anything or finished something and then started something new. If writers just wrote when they felt like it, and if writers just wrote when it was fun, we'd never write. To be honest, I'm a big fan of the term hate writing. And uh, where's that from, Deb? Well, I actually made it up myself. Sometimes in order to get something done, I just sit down and go, okay, you gotta do, 
a week of hate writing. That's what you're going to do. Four days a week of four hours a week. That'll be 16 hours of hate writing. And I just have realistic expectations. I don't sit there and go, well, this isn't magical. Where are the fireworks? I'm just going to stop. Now, have realistic expectations. Just go in and go, this is going to suck, but it will be over in an hour. And then I'm going to make myself a nice piece of toast or go for a walk, have a glass of wine or a piece of chocolate or whinge on the internet about how much I hate writing. It's normal. Hate it. Keep going. All right. No pain, no gain. Writing myth number five, that if you think that your writing sucks, if you are worried about what people think, and if you procrastinate, you can't write. Everyone who writes, we all have to deal with those things all the time. If you think your work sucks, if you're worried about what other people think and you procrastinate, congratulations, there's a club for that called Everyone and we're all there. And the difference between the people who get stuff done and keep getting stuff done and the people who don't are the people who just turn to those voices and go, go away, I'm writing, come back in an hour. You need to know those feelings and those thoughts are normal. For every positive thought you're going to have, expect 17 negative thoughts. And the more you push them away, the the quieter those voices and the, the less frequent you will hear them. I guarantee it. You uh, think your writing sucks? There's a club for that called Everyone. So you're worried about what other people think? There's a club for that, again, called Everyone. Oh, you procrastinate. Wow, I've never heard of that. Only joking. There's a club for that called Everyone. Just get over yourself. That's the most important thing. Pull your finger out. Get over yourself. Your excuses are Bullshit. Do you want to write? All right, let's crack on. Ah, I'm writing myth number four that you need inspiration. I saw something somewhere. I'm reading, it was, look, it was probably on Facebook. And it said, it was a meme that said something like, if you're waiting for inspiration, you're not a writer, you're a waiter. I've been a waiter, nothing wrong with being a waiter. Love being a waiter. Hospitality is a very honorable profession. But are you a writer or not? You can't sit there. You have to sit there and just start writing. You just have to grind it out of you. Did the people who turned up on the gold fields in Victoria just turn up and go, oh, no gold here. We'll just go home, shall we? No, of course they didn't. They dug and they dug and they dug and they dug. And that's what you need to do. Think of it less as some kind of high and mighty, magical kind of muse type situation and just do get doable, small, prioritizable chunks of time, force yourself to do it. And I promise as you tick, tip, tick, tick, tap, 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 dig, dig away, something will reveal itself. It's kind of a little bit like an, an archeological dig and mining, gold mining, is like a perfect example of what writing feels like. You just keep digging, digging, digging away, hoping that you'll hit gold. And every now and then you do find, you know, some flakes here, some small nuggets there, and that's what keeps you going. But again, let's just go back to we write because it makes us feel better. Writing myth number three is that you need a lot of time to write. No, you don't. No, you don't. And actually, you may find that the thought that you need a lot of time to write is stopping you from writing because you are thinking, well, I don't have that amount of time and I don't have that amazing situation that I need and I don't have that writer's retreat. I don't know who gave you this idea that you need huge expanses of time to write. It is true that at certain parts of certain projects, you may need uninterrupted trains of thought. What you need to know is that's not the only way that you can get writing or get productive with your writing. Right in the cracks. So many pieces and so many books and so many screenplays have been written in five minute increments. Most women who have written PhDs with children, and some men of course, but most definitely women, will be able to tell you that there was a vast amount of their work that was done in five minute increments. If you lower 
your expectations about the amount of time that you need, you'll be so surprised about what you actually get done. Take small blocks of time, don't do anything else, totally focus on just getting the sentence finished, getting the paragraph finished, and you will be amazed. It's the idea of focusing on making singular bricks and not focusing on building a bridge. Because the building of a bridge is a very daunting thing and it's easy to be put off by the huge amount of work that needs to be done. It's much, much easier to see if I can make a brick in this five minutes, in this seven minutes while I'm waiting in this waiting room for my appointment. You don't need a lot of time. You can get a huge amount done in small periods of time. And if we get back to what I've said earlier about focusing not on the project, but on the process, the fact that you're writing a bit is going to not only make you feel better, but is ultimately gonna make you a better writer as well. That tiny bit that you write while you are sitting in the car out the front waiting to pick someone out might be that small chunk, might be the thing that leads you to that long period of productive writing because you just got that little chunk in when you could and your brain started click, click, clicking away. And the thing is that we interrupt ourselves. So even if I gave you, say, okay, I'm going to give you like four hours a day in a garret or wherever we're supposed to write, I can guarantee you'd still be interrupting yourself at times and going onto your social media, going onto your emails, looking out the window, ringing a friend, responding to a text, just right in the cracks. And I promise you, before you know it, you'll have something, a lot of things done. And more importantly, you'll start to feel really good and see what is possible in small, doable chunks of time. This leads me on perfectly to writing myth number two. Now, writing myth number two is that you need perfect writing conditions. You don't, that is just a fantastic excuse for you not to write. If you find that you can only write if it's quiet, carry headphones, use a white noise app, work your way around it. I can't possibly write this until I have my own office, I have my special chair, I have an advance. These are just really convenient excuses not to write. Perfect writing conditions are kind of a myth too. I mean, even if you have this the most amazing writing setup, sometimes it's gonna be too hot, sometimes it's gonna be too cold, sometimes it's gonna be jackhammers going out the front, sometimes there's gonna be a weird smell in there, sometimes you're actually gonna be wanting to be in a different place because you're keeping an eye on something that you're cooking or you're looking after a pup or there's a beautiful view at the window of something that you've planted, you wanna keep an eye on that or you're sitting out the front waiting for your Uber Eats to arrive. There is no such thing as perfect writing conditions. The perfect writing condition is any condition at all that you can find a way to write. Take it as a bit of a challenge. Well, this seems fairly impossible. How am I going to find a way to write? It might be leaving where you are right now and going to sit in the library too, sit in the car, sit out the front, sit out the back, go to a cafe or whatever. But there are no such things as perfect writing conditions. That, my friend, is a myth. Ah, writing myth number one. Guess what? Writer's block is a myth. Yes, it is. It's a big fat myth. And all it is, is procrastination, um, inability to, pr to prioritise, and narcissism. That's right. How is it narcissism? Embedded in that idea is that it has to be of a certain standard or that you are some level of genius that that only certain words are valuable for you to write and that anything that you possibly wrote that you would think would be substandard, which suggests that you have an expected standard of, of how you you think your writing should be or what you think people think of you, that you couldn't possibly just get up and write something which is lesser than that. No, writer's block doesn't exist. If you're not writing, just say you're not writing. Don't blame it on writer's block because I tell you what, that's really convenient. And it sounds great, doesn't it? Makes people think, oh, they've got writer's block because they're a writer. It's like, hmm, you might be a writer, you might be a writer, you're just not writing. Writer's block is a myth. Thanks for joining me again today. There's a link in the comments to all my other online classes and to show you ways you can donate to my little cry for help because every time you spend a dollar, you are voting on how you want the world to be. Supported by the City of Melbourne COVID-19 Arts Grants.